yeah, shout out to Spoken Word Rwanda for hosting these events. I think as a poet, like having spaces like this is really is really dope for young people like me and for other poets because we have a place where we can express our art. And then secondly, thank you all for coming because these things can be rather uninteresting if there's no one to perform to. So a round of applause for yourselves. You guys don't like yourselves? Clap for yourselves. Uh, I'm going to read two poems for you, if that's okay. Um, this first poem is called, um, it's a short poem, and it's called Hard to Love. And it's for my new friend, Nathaniel. This is going to be awkward because it's a love poem, and I'm sending it out to a guy, but just bear with me. <laughs> you act like falling in love is a bad thing. Like being committed is a disease, a leprosy that covers your skin and makes you unclean. You act like you are incapable of more than just empty promises. And feelings and reciprocated and a volcano of pent-up emotions always waiting to erupt. You act like you are not made up of more than just body. You are spirit and soul, but all you do is take bodies and parts of bodies and souls as if the physical is the only realm you exist in. You act like there is no God. As if he has not shown you love or the way or how to pray or ways with which you must not pray on innocent souls that fall in love with you even though they cannot see you, but they feel you in each captured image and creation of memory. It takes them less than six days to fall in love with you while you are still figuring out which fruit to eat. A fruit a day keeps the doctor away, but you have never learned the art of swallowing your Adam's apple. You forget that this house cannot be enough home for you and them and love and your ego and selfishness. And so you look out of windows because you are afraid of mirrors. Because good Lord, why is it so hard for you to love? Thank you. Uh, uh, how many of us can swim? Hands in the air if you can swim. Don't be shy. Okay. How many of us speak a tongue that is foreign to us? You speak a tongue that's foreign to you. You speak English and you're not English. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, this next poem is titled Swimming and Foreign Tongues. This tongue is foreign to me. Almost as foreign as the white man who discovered the massive lake my ancestors fished in before he came. My mother tells me that I, when I was the tender edge of seven, spoke my mother tongue as fluently as the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Well, that was before I went to a school where the British curriculum was taught to us and we were punished for speaking our mother tongues. Bullied for being different, my accent became a burden too heavy to carry. I came home one night and told her that I would never speak it ever again and just like that, the light of my past became pitch blackness. I guess that's what happens when you are colonized, when the lake you once knew is discovered and named by the white man who came to you, but there and then I learned how to swim. I swam through crowds and words. I learned the speech stroke. I grew up on American pop culture, basketball, durags, and the N-word, and the N-word was given to you for speaking English, well, at least for speaking English like the rappers we watched. Tupac was the local hero, and Biggie was the villain, depending on who you listen to first. And yet I was too American to be African back home and just enough of African to be told to go back home and definitely not enough of anything to be African American. So I guess I was somewhere in the ocean, but at least then I could swim. My father's father <laughs> at the end of his life and the beginning of the next at the tender edge of 91 never leaves his room without a three piece and a hat. He was raised in the era of British rule, tea at four, tea plantations at five. He was one of six that made it out. He taught for seven plus years, but it was too late then to teach an old dog eight new tricks. He ate kaunga with a fork and knife. He preached only that which he was taught. He probably thought the queen got his mail. Bless you, son. At least you can swim. I never appreciated my ability to swim till I realized that I have no identity. It was lost in the sea of forgetfulness of my mother tongue, dropped in the hole I dug as punishment for connecting to my roots. My tongue learned to swim past crowds that once laughed at my accent, past my own people that judged me for not being able to carry my mother through my tongue. It swam through waves of fear and lack of identity. But at least then I could swim. Thank you.